so very good evening to all uh, so today we are going to talk about gcms metabolomics most importantly gas chromatography and mass spectrometry how this gcms is working and what kind of uh, analysis we can do by using this gcms so this metabolomics is nowadays very hot topic because every everywhere everybody talking about this metabolomics <laughs> So first, what is metabolomics? So metabolomics is a study about a metabolite present in the tissue or animal or cells or whatever it may be. So based on that, the metabolomics analysis are characterized into two, two types. One is targeted metabolomics and another one is untargeted metabolomics. So this uh, target metabolics means uh, it is absolute quantifications. So we have to target particular metabolite uh, for our analysis. That is targeted metabolomics. So for this analysis, we need internal standard uh, because of comparisons or uh, because of uh, this quantity purpose, we need this internal standard. And uh, here we can detect known commons related to the specific pathway. So another one is undargeted metabolomics. Here we can measure all possible metabolites, whatever available in the sample. So like uh, fold change, for example, you take uh, two samples. So one is from normal, normal cells and another one is cancer cells. So you have to extract whatever metabolites is available in that particular uh, sample. Then you go for the analysis. And finally, you can confirm what is the difference or there between the samples and how much quantity is there, how much quantity are, are there. Uh, then you can easily compare what, what are the changes are there in between the samples. That is untargeted metabolomics. So nowadays, a lot of uh, instruments are there for this metabolomic analysis. Starting from the gas chromatography and mass spectrometry, it's also very excellent too. And LCMS also there, liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry, and NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. So these are the major equipment uh, which is useful for this metabolomic analysis. <coughs> so, so how to frame uh, the um, work, working org. So the study start with an experimental designs that consist of two main steps. So first is we have to defend, defend the biological problems. First, we have to identify the biological problems and we have to generate the hypothesis of the study, the hypothesis for this particular biological problem. That's very important then you have to go for sample preparations or extractions. Once the extraction is over, you have to select the proper derivatization reagents because derivatization is very important. Why is this derivatization important? Because we are in GCMS, it is used for analyzing only the volatile compounds. So the derivatization is very important. It is convert volatile into, sorry, non-volatile into volatile compounds. So once this over, we go for the analysis process. And then we have to develop a suitable method for this uh, uh, running the metabolome. Uh, then a lot of different steps are there, like data pre-processing, data acquisitions, and data statistical analysis, and finally interpretations. And uh, nowadays, a lot of uh, uh, statistical tools also available. That's based on our hypothesis. Uh, we have to select the suitable tool. Uh, principal compound analysis and coefficients of variance. These are the uh, tool which is uh, mostly used tool. So whatever nowadays, whatever the publications are we are seeing, they mention principal compound analysis and coefficients of variance. <clears throat> and once uh, first we have to uh, we created the hypothesis, then we go for the sample preparations. The sample. Uh, maybe cell or biological fluids or tissues, then we have to go for 
a suitable extraction process uh, for metabolomic extractions. So a lot of different kind of uh, freely available uh, methods are there. You, you can easily uh, purchase uh, light quenching extraction method, solid-based extractions, and solid-based mi micro extractions. These are the different kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, methods which is available in the which is, is commonly available in the market. You can contact any company person. Uh, they will uh, give, give these kind of uh, kits. Okay, then you have to select. So how it is working, this kind of uh, extraction uh, techniques. But having a, like, uh, whenever we talk about the chromatography, the chromatography generally do, uh, have a mobile face and stationary face. And like this, here, uh, this extraction techniques like uh, solid based micro extractions, it having uh, <coughs> a solid base, it is coated with different kind of functional group. So this uh, uh, sample, whatever samples uh, we are extracting, these uh, samples combined or these samples uh, react with uh, react with that functional group and uh, the the particular compounds get eluted. And uh, we can uh, directly inject uh, this uh, SPM sample uh, through the column. Then we can easily analyze. And another one method is uh, general methods. Um, we can use organic solvent. We all know about um, different kind of solvents. So it is divided into polar solvent and non-polar solvent. Uh, in biological samples, methanol, ethanol, or methanol, methanol, ethanol combinations with uh, water we can use for biological samples. And also non-polar solvent, we can use chloroform, hexane, ethyl acetate. And a uh, lot of samples are there, a lot of solvents are there. Uh, we have to uh, choose the particular solvent. Yeah, that's also based on the, our compound of interest. So what kind of uh, uh, samples we are taking, uh, what kind of compound we are targeting, based on that, we have to select the suitable solvent. Yeah, suppose we don't know about uh, this common information or you are going with the undargeted metabolomics, means we have to take different kind of samples. You try with four or five different kind of solvents. And another one is derivatization. So this derivatization is very important whenever you are doing uh, any chromatography techniques. Nowadays, uh, many of them don't aware of these derivatizations. Nobody using nowadays, only uh, the industrial persons and uh, maybe the uh, higher institutions, they're using the derivatizations. The derivatization is very important because, uh, um, for example, you are extracting some metabolites or extracting some natural compounds. So, uh, whatever is some, whatever solvent you are using, so everything. Uh, so everything in the uh, samples, solvent. But most of the uh, compounds are non-volatile. So we have to make it as a volatile compounds, then only we can easily uh, detect in the MOS analysis. So these derivatives and reacts, re, uh, reagents can convert non-volatile compound to volatile ones. And how to select the suitable derivative agent. So that's also very important. You can, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, take some uh, reference articles that you can follow, or you can contact some company person. Like you can contact Sigma, or you can contact Sigma or Suto. So because uh, many uh, companies, they are providing the instrumentation. So they are all aware about uh, the derivative reagent because every each and every company having the application chemist or application scientist they will help you uh, to find out the suitable derivative reagent or else you contact some chemistry persons they will help you because this uh, this is very important and also this is uh, based on the uh, compound so there are three basic type of derivative reaction, uh, reactions are there reagents are there only cellulizations, these cellulizations are reactive with 
compound containing active hydrogen groups. And another one is acylations. These acylations, highly polar functional group such as amino acids or carbohydrates. And acylations also, there are a lot of uh, uh, derivatives and reagents are there. So uh, you have to select. So this acylation is a single process, but you have to select a suitable derivatives. Well, suppose you are do, doing with polysaccharide, then you go, go with acylation reagent. And another one is alkylization. These alkylization target active hydrogens on amines and acetic hydroxyl groups. Or you can choose multiple derivatives and reagents also. For example, now we are talking about metabolites, right? The metabolites are having different kind of, uh, different group of compounds. So, uh, so in that conditions, you go with uh, uh, multiple derivative, derivative system reagent. That is very important. Are you targeting, uh, you are targeting single compound and you uh, directly go with uh, uh, particular derivative reagents. So this is analysis workflow in undergraduate metabolomic studies. So uh, first you have to collect your sample, biological samples. Then you go with, uh, you have to select proper instrumentations. So here uh, we can use GCM or LCM or random work. Then uh, like this is a lot of different kind of uh, processing or process. And then you go for uh, spec spectral processing. Uh, here, uh, basin correction, noise filtering, peak detection, peak alignment. <laughs> and whenever you are doing quantitative purpose, you have to uh, do all, all kind of uh, process. You have to make it uh, noise filtration, peak detection, peak alignment and normalization and peak annotation. And uh, once it is over, the spectral processing is over, you get uh, the clear picture. Uh, so based on that, we go with uh, data analysis. Data analysis, uh, a different kind of data analysis that is there, univariant analysis, unsupervised multivariant analysis, or supervariant multivariant analysis, and multivariant multi methods. Yeah. Then uh, for metabolic identification, the different kind of tools, online tools are there, or different kind of software is also there. I uh, have to go with uh, proper software. Then finally, Biological inter interpretations of research. Uh, that is qualitative, uh, called as pathway analysis. Uh, pathway analysis also different kind of uh, tools are there. You have to select a suitable tool. That's according to your hypothesis of the study. So these are the steps we have to follow during the metabolic analysis. And also, um, a lot of uh, steps are involving in the metabolic analysis. We have to uh, we have to run to, uh, multi multiple samples. <clears throat> so this is a, a previously published article uh, from the Nature Protocol. So this is GCMS based metabolite profiling in plants. Uh, tomato. They took a small minimum amount of uh, tomato leaves. The homogen, uh, they did homogen, homogenization and uh, different kind of process like enzyme inactivations. Uh, after that, they ordered, uh, uh, they ordered, uh, they ordered uh, their internal standard. Then once it's over, uh, they did uh, lyophilization. Then they ordered different kind of uh, derivative reagents. Then once it's over, they injected. Uh, into the GCMS. So this is a very simple protocol, but uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to purchase internal standard and we have to purchase the derivative regions. That's uh, a little bit costly. Now it comes around uh, uh, 20, 20, 25,000 rupees. For, uh, for, uh, for simple natural compound analysis, what we will do? Uh, we have we take a uh, uh, 500 gram or uh, or one kg or uh, 250 gram of uh, plant materials and go with the salon extractions. So here uh, only one mg 
are uh, low fire, five mg of sample is enough for uh, this kind of uh, studies. So this is the GCMS analytical conditions. Whenever uh, uh, you are reading uh, the reference articles, so they will mention the, this, uh, this kind of condi analytical conditions. Uh, so whenever you are uh, writing your papers, uh, you have to mention uh, the instrument name, instrument model. So there we have, then you have to mention the column, what kind of column you, you are used. And this class is uh, what kind of injector. Injector also different kind of injectors also available in the market. You have, to, you have to mention the injector name of the injector. And first one is injection port temperature. Okay, in GCMS case, uh, there are different kind of uh, different types of uh, uh, different types of uh, heat we are applying. For example, uh, this is a diagram of GCMS. This uh, upper one is injector, and here we are having GC. GC is combined with MOSFET. Uh, this flow the injection injector we have one uh, port uh, that is called injection port there we have to maintain we have to maintain some particular temperatures and the column one also we have to maintain some temperatures and another one part is there that is called interface so these interfaces are all like structures it is connecting gc with ms there also we have to maintain particular temperature and the MS also having different temperatures. These are analytical conditions. We have to mention the injection board temperature. The injection board temperature should be 200 to 300. Because whatever you're injecting through the injectors, all samples get vaporized. And these vaporized samples injected through the, injected through the column. So the injection, injection temperature uh, should be 250 degrees Celsius and column oven temperature. So this is the program. See, uh, that started uh, the program from 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, they're holding this program for two minutes and further they're they are increasing 15 degrees Celsius per minute up to 330 degrees Celsius. And in that 330 degrees Celsius, they're holding for three minutes, right? So this is the uh, total length program. And another one is injection mode. There are different kind of injection modes are there. We have to mention and speed ratio and carrier gas flow and interface temperature, ion source temperature, and what kind of measurements you are doing, what kind of uh, measurement and in which mode you are doing, and scanning time. So these are the analytical, analytical conditions you have to mention in your publications. So this is a total ion chromatogram of Metabolite, metabolites uh, is isolated from the promoter leaves. So TAC, we can call it as TAC, total ion chromatogram. And GCMS, what we are, what we are getting, we are getting the fragment pattern of the molecules, or it will give uh, a fragment ions, right? So this mass spectrometry, uh, so these detectors will collect all the uh, all the fragment ions and it will collect, uh, it will give total ion chromatogram. So this, uh, this image for this, for uh, this internal standard, and they used uh, methoxy methane and trimethyl silicates as a derivative reagents. <clears throat> so these are the compounds, uh, the detectors. Uh, this is for uh, internal standard, they used glucose, and it's a sugar and fumaric acids or this organic acids and amino acids valine and adenosines, this nucleosides. They used the four kind of uh, general standard and selected TMS as here, so double derivative reagents. Finally, they got 170 metabolites. So these are the uh, amino, it includes amino acids and glucose, uh, and uh, this nucleosides. So this, this, for identifying this 170 compounds, we have to spend uh, more time and also um, we have to run more, more, more number of samples. So these are the commonly available mass spectral data, database. 
uh, and metabolic data database and different kind of databases also there. So uh, many of them uh, we have to purchase and some uh, some uh, software are freely available or the online software or online tool. So that's also we can use. Uh, commonly uh, for this metabolic analysis, for mass spectral analysis, uh, here we are using NHT, NIST, NIST 17, NIST 11, and Wiley 8 library. And uh, when, for metabolic, metabolic data phase, we can use PubChem, Chem Spider, and HEC software. So these are the different kind of uh, databases, which is used for the pathway analysis. Uh, so these are the databases, right? Uh, these are the MS, paid, MS mass spectrometry based metabolic analysis. Uh, there we can uh, two types of uh, analysis we can use. One is separation based MS techniques and one is separation free MS techniques. For separations, we can, uh, we can use uh, GCMS, LCMS, or CEMS means uh, capillary electrophoresis mass spectrometry. And uh, another one is IMMS, means the ion mobility mass spectrometry. And GCMS, we have one time only, uh, one dimensional GC and two dimensional GC. And LCMS, RBLC, HELIC, and SFS, SFC. So like this, uh, there are different kind of mass spectrometry also available. For metabolic analysis, we can use uh, uh, GCMS, MS, or GC, MS, MS also we can use, or we can directly use uh, HRMS, MS also. So these are the different kind of mass spectrometry and their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, here uh, we are we are uh, uh, discussing about gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. Uh, this is very suitable for the detection of volatile metabolites. We can get highly repeated RT and sometime. And also for this uh, GCMS uh, analysis, there are standard library also available, so we can easily uh, compare our result. And what are the disadvantages? Disadvantages. This is unsuitable for non-volatile and thermally unstable metabolites. Because uh, this GCM is also like a thermal uh, thermal uh, thermal machine. Because each and every part uh, we are measuring uh, different temperatures. So whatever sample we are focusing or whatever samples we are injecting, that should have thermal stability. Then only we can get build on this. And the sample pre-processing process is DDS and often drug and derivative systems. So this very um, um, complex process for selecting the suitable derivative system reagents. And LCMS, uh, like compared to GCMS, this LCMS is very simple sample, sample preparations. And it can be matched with multiple MS detectors. So we can use multiple uh, detectors in uh, LCMS. In GCMS, we can use FID. Well, in GC, we can use different kind of detectors. That's also based on the our target. In GCMS, uh, GCMS, uh, mass spec accuracy detectors. And what are the differences are there between GCMS and LCMS? This GCMS is only for uh, this volatile common analysis, and in LCMS this for non-volatile common analysis. And uh, this LCMS, uh, we can detect higher molecular weight compounds in LCMS, uh, the GCMS uh, for only small molecules. Uh, the mass to charge ratio or uh, mass range between uh, 40, 45 to 1000. Uh, this also uh, reference to that. I took from the internet. So uh, they analyzed, uh, they, uh, they developed a protocol like CMET for analyzing metabolite from the seawaters and also for analyzing or extracting the metabolite from the marine, marine environment, seawater and uh, marine sediment. 
So they collected uh, different uh, kind of marine sediment. One is from the uh, coral ecosystems, and another one is the mangrove ecosystems. There, they they collected uh, the bacteria. So whatever whatever bacteria there, they collected. How uh, then they they identified uh, what are the metabolites are there in the sediment? How these metabolites are helping uh, these microorganisms? What are the relationship between the uh, uh, nutrients and uh, these microorganisms? How it is helping uh, uh, the mangrove or uh, uh, helping the growth of mangrove and uh, helping the growth of coral? So they also uh, they also selected the suitable uh, derivative reagents. And finally, they confirmed these sediments having a lot of uh, glucose and this lot of uh, amino acids. So these are the different kind of uh, instruments uh, which we can use using used for the measurement of organic compounds. Uh, for like, we can use uh, for organic compound analysis, we can use gas chromatography and we can use HBLC, GCMS, LCMS, and FTAR. Because the GC and HBLC, that's very wonderful for the separation purpose. And for quality purpose, for, for qualitative analysis, uh, we, we can use mass spectrometry. This uh, maybe it is uh, like GCM, we can use GCMS and LCMS. Use FTAR and NMR also. For quantitative analysis, also we can use GC, HBLC also we can quantify uh, all the compounds and we can use GCMS. So these are the different uh, spectroscopic methods uh, which is used for the structural determination of the molecules or compounds. So we can use ultraviolet uh, spectroscopy so this UV uh, visual based spectroscopy. Uh, this determination of absorption pan, uh, pans of transition metal ions and functionalized organic okay. compounds. The conventional UV visible and TRST. Mm -hmm. Another one is infrared Thanks. spectroscopy. This is for determination of functional groups in organic compounds by PR techniques. And uh, another one is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, NMR. Here, we, this is for the determination of molecular structures and make mapping of carbon hydrogen framework by one dimensional and two dimensional techniques. And the uh, GCMS case, GC, uh, in the chromatography uh, side, uh, this mass spectrometry is uh, very much useful. Uh, this is used for the determination of molecular mass and formula and structural information. So what kind of information can be derived from the mass spectrometry? It will give molecular mass and molecular formula of the compound. We can get the structure uh, from the fragmentation uh, fingerprint. And it is very excellent for identification or determination of isotopic peak and their abundance and distributions and we can do protein sequencing by using multi-tof this is very excellent for uh, protein sequencing and it is act as a molecular library uh, it having all the information uh, all the common information uh, from small organic molecule to uh, very large organic compounds we can uh, able to detect in the mass spectrometry uh, in our our institute, uh, we have CMOS GCMS QP two zero one zero ultra model. Uh, that's very sensitive. The sensitive sensitivity of the instrument is one picogram. So one picogram sensitivity. So one picogram sample is enough for uh, this entire analysis. So based on the sensitivity, uh, the price also may vary. Uh, we are having a single quadruple. You can uh, select a uh, uh, double quadruple or triple quadruple also. So based on the uh, sensitivity, the amounts also uh, 
change. So chromatography is a technique that separates complex mixer into individual components for identifications and quantifications. Uh, we can do both qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. In qualitative analysis, we can identify what are the compounds present in the samples. In the quantitative analysis, we can uh, able to detect uh, how much amount of uh, the target is present in the samples. And also the GCSA technique that we the sample mixture into JCS compound, compounds and separate them based on the boiling point of the compounds and the differential absorption on a porous solid or liquid support, right? In GCMS, we have a column is very important. There are different kinds of compounds, sorry, different kinds of columns also available. More than thousand number of column available uh, in the market. So based on your analysis, you have to select a suitable column. Uh, so then you go for your sample analysis. In GC, uh, GC is uh, very good for the separation purpose. And the column also different kind of columns are available. And the GCMS is uh, commonly used for analysis of low molecular weight and volatile compounds. We can do only volatile compounds. We can uh, use it, uh, GCMS is very much useful for analysis of pesticides. There being hydrocarbon, we can use aromatic hydrocarbons ester, ketones, and alcohol. And we can, uh, we can detect amino acids, organic acids, sugar, phosphates, and fatty acids also. And this LCMS, uh, it is only for uh, non-volatile common analysis. Uh, there we can detect peptides, lipids, and nucleotides. And also we can do general analysis like amino acids and fatty acids analysis also. We can do in the LCMS. Uh, in, G in the GCMS, uh, 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 we can do low molecular weight to mid molecular weight compounds. Uh, LCMS for high molecular weight. Uh, you can up upgrade the GCMS. If you want to upgrade into GCMS, MS, uh, you can upgrade. So this, uh, this is the graphical representation of the GCMS. <coughs> So having a injector, first we, have, we need carrier gaze. In GCMS case, uh, helium act as a carrier gaze. In GC, we can use uh, hydrogen or nitrogen also. We can use argon also we can use in the GC. In GCMS, uh, we can use only helium. And another one is flow controller, an injection port, and column oven, columns, and GCMS interface. A mass spectrometry. These are the mass analyzer, ion source. In the MS, in mass spectrometry, having the molecular pump, ion source, mass analyzer, detector, and uh, we have this library for the dead and trapped designs. And this uh, auto injector, uh, there are different kinds of injectors also available. This is very simple uh, liquid injector. My headspace also available. The headspace. Uh, uh, a very good uh, uh, sample injectors. And here we are having column, right? This in GC oven, we have column. That is capillary column. There are different kind of uh, the column, different length of column available. This one part of the column is uh, connected with uh, this auto assembler. And another one, is, another one side uh, connected with uh, this mass spectrometry. It should be in the clockwise directions. So once the sample injected in the injector, then we will maintain 250 temperature in the injection port. So whatever you are injecting, the samples get vaporized, right? Uh, this is the principle of chromatography. Uh, so like it having injector, column, and detector. Like here, injector, uh, we have we have we have we are injecting. For example, we are injecting uh, a sample. It's having two compounds, A plus B. So in the column, we are maintaining different uh, uh, different temperatures with a different time. So these uh, uh, samples react with uh, the stationary phase or column. So based on the temperatures, the sample get eluted. So these eluted compounds will come to the detectors. 
like a coming first so we are getting one spectrum peak a uh, the later we are getting uh, the later the b reaching the reductor we are getting another one spectrum big p so like that whatever compounds uh, are there in the samples we will get the spectrum so this is the structure of gc gas chromatograph so whenever you are running the gas chromatography you need the internal standard so fid flame analysis detector is a commonly used detector in the gc and we are having gcms in gcms also uh, we can use both detector in gcms case my ms mass spectrometry is like this detector detector there also we can uh, uh, we can combine another one detector so fid also we can combine so so what is the difference between gc and gcms uh, in gc we have a fi detectors for uh, for flaming these detectors we need makeup case right and here also we have injector column and detectors so whatever samples you are injecting uh, so this uh, run through the column so in fid what will happen whatever uh, whatever uh, sample coming from the column it is a detector and it will get ionized so this ionized patterns are recorded by the recorder you will get the spectrum but there is no reference library reference library in the gc so this confirmation of uh, confirmation of common is uh, very difficult in gc so we need internal standard we have to uh, inject uh, samples along with the internal standard then we can easily compare so there are different kind of kind of injection methods are there in the gc so like split injections splitless injections this is very most commonly used method used to injection technique and we have oc injection and ptv injections uh, so when uh, uh, most of the publication they mention split split injections uh, they they mention split ratio so in the split injection the split vent is opened they have one uh, port that is called a split uh, split vent that is opened in splitless injection that is closed so whenever you are injecting uh, the concentrated samples means more than 10 ppm you go with split injections so suppose you are injecting uh, pure compounds means you go with the splitless injections so this is sample injection method in gc uh, so the left side one is split, splitless injections uh, there you can see the split vent is closed uh, so in top portions we have a sample injector and and this left side uh, the carrier gas is entering through uh, through the injector to the column and we have another one flow that's called purge flow purge so always we, we have to ma maintain uh, this purge flow I mean 3 ml per minute so this is uh, uh, this is for uh, avoiding contaminations in the injection port we have to maintain and the splitless mode whatever you are injecting uh, that's abrasive and they mix it with the uh, helium gas and it will go, go to the column in split injections you have to mention the split ratio like 1 is to 10, like 1 is to 50, or 1 is to 40. So you are mentioning more split. The sample injections are very low. Suppose you are, you are uh, mentioning uh, very less, less split, uh, the sample uh, flow is more. So uh, here in the split mode, the split vent is open. So you have to mention the split rates, for example, I am injecting the concentration sample. I don't know about the concentration of the samples. So suppose you are injecting more samples, what, what will happen? So all samples run through the column. So it is uh, get ionization. So it is recorded by the recorder. So the detector will receive a uh, lot of signals. So uh, it will spoil the detector. That's why we have to reduce the sample injections. So you go with split. For example, I'm giving 1 is to 20. 
means 80% of the samples will go to the column, 20% will go out uh, through the split band. Like that, we have to give the split ratio. These are the uh, GC detectors, DCD, FID, ECD, electron capture detectors, FBD and FTD. Uh, so we have, uh, we have uh, ECD and MOSFET also we have. And in our institutions, uh, we, uh, we can use general organic compounds and also we can use, uh, we can use it for pesticide analysis also. So this uh, detector based on the uh, compounds we have to select. <clears throat> so this is the chromatogram. It's look like this. So having X axis and Y axis. This X axis represent the uh, retention time, and this Y axis represent the signal intensity of the detector. So here uh, they will give a uh, uh, spectrum. Uh, this the spec whatever. Uh, spectrum you are getting from the GC, it should be very short. Uh, the P or represent the retention time. We're starting, we're starting to uh, the first spectrum, right? And this uh, T0, that is called the time of column. So there is no illusions. There is no spectrum is emerged. So then we can call it the time of column. And this A represent the peak area. This peak area is very important. So this peak area uh, giving the information about the uh, quantity of the samples. So it is more, it is very important for the quantity purpose. And the H is, uh, H is mean for peak height. So this is a simple understanding uh, for quality analysis of, for GC. Uh, we have to have to inject unknown samples. Uh, you you, are, uh, you will get some spectrum. So then you have to inject the standard samples. Uh, for example, the standard, standard samples having a mixture of sam uh, mixture of so mixture of compounds like A and B. So you are getting two spectrum. So we have to compare this standard with the unknown sample. Then finally you can confirm uh, or you can identify the uh, compound. So whenever, uh, uh, so for example, uh, I'm doing uh, a sample in my intuitions. So again, I'm doing the same sample samples in another intuition with same uh, same method file. You can get the same result. For example, uh, you are giving sample to me. I am analyzing by using uh, a specific method. So you are running the same sample, sample in another institute with different method file. You can get a different result. So this is quantitative analysis. So this example for quantitative analysis for GC. And you have to inject, uh, first you have to inject your unknown samples. For example, uh, I'm injecting one meal. Uh, I'm getting the peak area 700 having only one compound, compound and A, right? Then you are injecting your standard. The standard, you are injecting one meal of standard, it having uh, 100 ppm. The compound A, 100 ppm. You are getting peak area, 1000. Then you can, you can easily plot this uh, value in the uh, chart. Then you can easily find out. For 100 ppm, you are getting peak area thousands. So for unknown, you are getting peak area 700. Means your concentration of uh, your quantitative uh, value of your unknown sample is 70 ppm, right? This is, very, and this is a, a simple understanding about the quantitative analysis, like a protein. So for protein, estimation of protein, we, we, uh, we will use PSA, Povencerum albumin. What we will do, we will uh, make it a city different constant, we will prepare a different concentration of BSE, then uh, we will uh, observe in the UV, right? Then we will run our unknown, unknown sample, unknown protein. Then finally, we can conclude, uh, we can find out the quantity of the particular protein. So like, like that, here also you have to purchase the standard, then you have to prepare it in the different, uh, different concentrations. Then you have to run all the standard, in a single file, then you have to 
uh, you have to uh, uh, prepare the calibration curve, then you go for the unknown sample injections. Then finally, you can easily uh, confirm your quantity. So the, uh, this is the data from mass spectrometry. So it, the mass spectrometry will give data like this. So this mass, uh, the mass distribution of ion is specific to compounds. Uh, in whenever you are looking at uh, the mass spectro MS data, mass spectrometry data, so it will give a lot of fragment ions, right? It will give a lot of fragment pattern. Uh, so this uh, ion specific to compounds. So this consideration of the spectral pattern give quality information. So based on these fragment ions, uh, we, uh, we can easily detect our uh, compound. So these are different kinds of applications. The GCM is having wide applications like pharmaceuticals. Uh, in there we can, it is used for the confirmation of identity of drug. And it is very uh, good for detection of this natural product and herbal medicines. Uh, we can use it as in clinical and forensic science. In agriculture, this is especially used for the determination of pesticide residues in agricultural product. And uh, this is very much important, the food and beverages. And in environmental also, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can determine the pesticides residues in the water. And it is uh, most important the flavor and fragrance industries and polymer and plastic and rubber analysis. And electronic and semiconductor also, this more it, it's uh, more useful. So this is the general sample requirement for GCMS analysis. The sample should be volatile. That's the one thing. And the sample should be thermal, uh, thermally stable. So these are the conditions. Uh, we have to take it whenever we are injecting the samples. And the analyte must have sufficient vapor, vapor pressure and thermally stable. Because uh, uh, in the GC injection board, column and, and iron source, uh, uh, there we, we are uh, maintaining different kind of temperatures, right? So this is suitable for analyzing organic compounds. So these are the types of columns. So now nobody using the packed column. Um, everywhere they're using the capillary column. So it having a different length, uh, different time, time meters. It is coated with the stationary phase, uh, coated with uh, liquid, liquid. So this having liquid coating. Uh, the, the liquid having uh, different combinations of uh, combinations. So this another one is interface. So this interface is a rod-like structure. So it is connecting uh, GC with MS. Uh, it is uh, sealed with vacuum and nut and ferrule. So this interface is very important. So whenever uh, uh, you are keeping uh, a particular temperature for interface, uh, so this is uh, based on the column final temperatures. It is based on column final temperatures. You have to maintain the interface temperature. So the mass spectro, the mass spectrometer look like this. Right, having a, uh, so here we are injecting our samples. There, there a filament is there and it is sealed with magnet and it is completely sealed with uh, uh, the vacuum. And it is directing only it is allowing only the positive ions to the detectors. So this recorder recording all the um, electron abundance. So the positive ions only detected in the mass spectrometry, the neutral species are undetected. Uh, these are the component of mass spectrometer. See the samples having uh, different kind of uh, components. So it is spraying to it is uh, uh, spraying in the mass spectrometry. So what will happen? Ionization is happening. So uh, it is detecting. Uh, this detector is detecting. So these are the different kind of ionization or ion source. 
and we have in mass spectrum mass spectrometry or mass spectrometer uh, so we having different components like ion source mass analysis and detectors so this ionization happening in the ion source and uh, the mass analysis uh, that's separating the ions uh, like uh, this based on the mass to charge ratios it is separating and detectors are detecting the ions in gcms case electron impact ionization is very much useful everywhere they are using ea ionization and this is a quarter volt dye mass analysis and the detector detector is electron multiplier detectors and in gcms we can use chemical ionization also so this chemical ionization is very excellent uh, for determination of pesticides so the mass analyzer is magnetic sector field uh, so the detector is multi channel plate in lcms we can use electron electro spray ionization esi uh, so this is uh, under the mass uh, electric sector field and the detector the detector is paradox and the multi this community based on the disruption ionization uh, in fab and multi uh, this we can use to a time of flight and ion drop so this vacuum is very important we have to uh, maintain the proper uh, vacuum conditions we have to use high vacuum conditions in high vacuum conditions the ion can move uh, easily uh, move from one uh, part to another so this is a uh, overview about the qp2010 ultra model they are having vacuum pump uh, like the rod system and source and systems so this is evacuation systems means the vacuum pump this all about the vacuum systems here the ion source uh, ion source uh, we have ion source different kind of lens system also there and they have a rod system detectors they have a different kind of lens system so uh, we have to uh, we have to maintain different elect electrons in the lens systems so in ion source so ionization is hap happening in the ion source so it's allowing uh, the ions into the lens systems so this lens system lead the molecule or uh, uh, lead them uh, lead the positive ions into the rod system so this rod system separating positive ions and negative ions so this, it is allowing only negative ions into the detectors so these are neutral ions uh, so these neutral ions whatever neutral ions are there it, come, it, it will uh, uh, go out in the vacuum so these are different kind of vacuum pump so everyone using the derbu derbu molecular pump uh, this column is very important so Uh, it is a cabinet column this very long class tip they having 30 meter column 60 meter and 100 meter also available so now everyone using 30 meter column uh, for uh, for avoiding the for avoiding uh, the usage of helium because suppose you are using 60 meter column what will happen the 60 meter column uh, it will take uh, more amount of helium the helium is very costly in our day For refilling the helium, it will come around thirty-seven thousand rupees. So, for avoiding uh, this helium usage, everybody using the thirty meter column and zero point two five micrometers. Suppose you are selecting zero point two five micrometer, we can maintain one to two mL per minute. But zero point three two mL means you can uh, maintain two to four mL per minute. But zero point like that. the based on the column dimensions you have to maintain the uh, carrier gas flow so now we are having 30 meter column 0.25 mm uh, id our column is rtx 5 ms uh, and uh, there we can use there, there is very uh, general column uh, we can uh, reach up to 340 degrees celsius and this is very excellent for uh, and we can now hydrocarbon and there we can do uh, this solvent uh, uh, different solvents and we can do pinali compounds and we can do 
pesticides also we can do and uh, main aromatic everything we can do in the antique spy ms cell so you all know about uh, you all know, know about this uh, ions uh, and this is atomic molecule with charge so this positive ions holding the positive charge so these are the ionization methods like ionization methods chemical ionization electro spray and the and this ea the most commonly used ionization techniques in gcms and it will give a lot of fragments the advantage of uh, ea is it will give a lot of fragment patterns so this ea uh, electron imbibed ionizations uh, the vaporized sample is bombarded with high energy electrons typically 70 electron volt so this 70 in the 70 electron volt whatever so uh, uh, samples are there in the injector it will get vaporized and it is a hard ionization method lead to significant fragmentations and this ionization is efficient but non selective uh, the advantage of ea is it is inexpensive versatile and reproducible and the fragmentation gives structure, structural information and the ea ha ea have large data phase and the disadvantage is sample must be relatively volatile and difficult to analyze high molecular weight so for this reason reason uh, uh, we are we can we are using lcms lcms for the in lcms we can analyze high molecular weight compounds and also non volatile compound also we can run in the lcms system so these are the um, a uh, graphical representation about the ea they having a uh, the sample molecule coming from the right side and it having the flamens this flamen creating or generating the electrons so the ions the samples get ionized so this is the uh, very uh, very commonly used used method and this is uh, this will generate lot of fragment ions for example our molecule m plus e minus so the minor uh, our molecule our ions having m plus or electron minus this uh, once ionization is happen it will get m plus plus two electron minus so this is ionization unit so for uh, analysis of pure samples so we can directly inject our pure sample in the mass spectrometry itself no need to separate for example uh, you are having a, a single compound single pure compounds mean no need to run the gc because the gc is only for the separation purpose so if you have mixture of mixture of samples you go with the gc then it will come to the mass spectrometry or else you are having the only pure samples you can directly inject inject into the mass spectrometry for that also we have a, a one one a sample injector a direct sample injection a direct sample injection port there it is very much helpful uh, for this purity sample analysis so this is the fragmentation on the spectrum it is getting from the gcms for example uh, the molecule is broken up at the position with weaker chemical bond by electrons for example a a b c d so this a b c d is a one molecules and having a one electron right so this molecule broken up at the weaker chemical bond so this uh, this is a possible fragmentations so suppose the fragmentation will happen between a b c r d you will get uh, two fragment a b c plus r d plus suppose the fragmentation will happen between a b c, a b and c d between the a b and c d you will get two fragment a b plus or cd plus so uh, like that you will get different fragment or uh, fragment pattern fragment <clears throat> so in the fragmentation pattern you will uh, you will see you can see two peak one is phase peak and another one is molecular ions the molecular ions represent the molecular weight of the compounds and the phase peak highly uh, highly intense intensive peak Uh, the high intensity spectrum uh, called phase peak uh, it will come in the first first row 
and the molecular ions uh, should be very low. Or, uh, so this is the mass of atom and mass numbers. In nature, carbon 12 or carbon 13 also available, and hydrogen 1 and hydrogen 2 also available. So and the GCMS is uh, very useful for the, uh, the identification of isotopes also. So this is the example, example of fragmentations, like uh, for example, methane, uh, methane CH4, and uh, it having a carbon plus four hydrogen. Uh, so fragmentation uh, happened between CH, CH3 plus CH3 plus H, you will get CH uh, plus CH13, or CH2 plus means uh, you will get CH14, and CH315, CH4 plus 16. Like that, you will get the fragment value. So these are the different kind of ionizations, uh, chemical ionizations. Uh, for chemical ionization, uh, we need the reagent gas like methane. Methane is uh, methane needed for the CA mode. And whenever you are running the CA mode, the one molecules added into the your molecular mass. That's from the uh, reagent gas. So, so this is the comparison between A and CA spectrum. Uh, for example, uh, this methyl stearate, this fatty acids, the molecular weight is 298. In A, uh, you can see the molecular ions uh, in the right side corner, 298 is very small, but it did give a lot of fragment ions, the 55, 69, 74, and 80, something like that. And the CA mode, uh, the, uh, you can see there is no fragment in the CA, but the molecular weight, molecular ion is 299. So originally, the methyl stearate molecular weight 298. In CA, one, one atom is ordered from the uh, reagent gas. So it given 299. So whenever you are doing CA, uh, you have to minus one atom from the molecular ions. Then only you will get the original original uh, result. So this is NCA. This is like uh, CA. This is a negative chemical ionization. This mostly for halogenated compounds. But no, no one using nowadays. But uh, for some uh, Industries they are using the NCA. So this is comparison between EA, NCA, and PCA. Like electron beta ionization, positive chemical ionization, negative chemical ionization. Uh, this is a pesticide uh, method. Uh, the molecular weight is 330. The E given a lot of fragment patterns, but PCA it given 331 uh, in the molecular ions. The NCA there is no molecular weight, and also it will be given very poor fragment ions. So the EA, EA is a more commonly used ionization technique. And PA, PCA or CA, chemical ionization also very excellent uh, for the pesticide analysis also. And this is a mass suppression unit. Um, this single quadruple mass analysis, having the four rod. This four rod is uh, opp oppositely, uh, oppositely arranged. So these electrons, the ion from uh, the ionization will hit the, uh, reach the mass spectrum and it will produce the secondary ions like that. Uh, this uh, uh, amplification will happen in the mass suppression unit. This electron multiple detectors having different, uh, uh, different uh, dynode. So the negative voltage is applied at each dynode. The absolute value of voltage become smaller at the later di dynode. So each and every time node, we have to mention different uh, temperatures. Uh, so this uh, electron multiplication is happening in the EA mode. So this is a radar system in the QP20. So here we can use two types of, uh, two kinds of modes. One is called, uh, one is scan mode and another one is sim mode. The scan mode for quality analysis and sim mode for uh, quantity analysis. So uh, this scan mode only for the peak identifications and determination of monitor, uh, determination of the molecules. The sim mode, there we can create, that, that is for creation of calibration curve, there we can uh, quantify our samples. So these are the results. Uh, the scan mode and sim mode, 
the sim mode very important uh, means sim means selective ion monitoring we have we can target uh, particular uh, molecules for our quantity purpose so library such a li library such also available we are using initial 1711 and wiley 8 they are having more than 6 lakh compounds so we can easily identify or interpret our result for metabolomic analysis there are different kind of metabolomic uh, studies are there uh, for metabolomics, you have to select uh, suitable or proper metabolomic library. Uh, so otherwise, uh, it is very difficult to analysis by using this common library. The same mode. So for quantization purpose, first we have to make calibration curve by using the same mode. Then uh, we have to run our known sample. Then we can easily quantify. The standard sample is needed to make calibration curve for each component. And this is relative sensitivity is different according to each component. So the summary of uh, summary, the GCM is uh, suitable for organic chemical analysis. So thank you so much. I'm ending the session now. Thank you, sir. Uh... Participants, if you have any questions, please post in the chat box, but please uh, use raise your hand option. I will unmute you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, just a minute, just a minute. Yes, sir. So if you want to study more about the GCMS or metabolomics, you can go to website, you go to Simarsu website, you can type Simarsu. You click this product. You click the product. Then you go to gas chromatography mass spectrometry. You select. So they given everything. So see, this is fundamental fundamental of GC. So this is very much useful for uh, teaching the students. So charting from the what is mass, so type of ions are there. So ionization methods, mode of ionization. So and also the Simorsu having their own like own publications. I go to industries, just click this industries. See, they have these are the publications. Uh, you cannot see, uh, you cannot find out in the normal Google. Uh, you go to the Simons website, for example, see uh, life science. Then they have proteomics, genomics, or genetics, life science. Not only GCMR, they give a lot of information about other instruments also. See small molecule form, pharmaceuticals. I'm going to metabolomics. See the publications, right? Food metabolomics and selecting the food metabolomics. So, so you can easily download. So everything free, you can use it. So they given the background of the study and uh, you want the analytical conditions, so what kind of uh, statistical tools they use on derivatives and derivatives, everything there in the, uh, in the file. So like that, uh, they have, uh, they have, uh, they given a uh, uh, number of uh, articles, or you go to the, this, you select the resources, or you go to this Simorsu journal, you click the Simorsu journal, just click, all Simorsu channel. See, so these are the publications. Uh, this is available only in the Simorsu website. This is the pharmaceutical analysis, food development, environmental analysis, biological taxonomy. They have a number of publications. 
So first I'm select, I'm taking one, I'm taking full development. Not only Simar Soup, you can, uh, you can find out, or uh, you can download more article from Agilent also. Go to Agilent website. There, uh, they have own library. Uh, they have a lot of publications. Uh, there you can find out uh, more materials. So thank you so much. Now we have any questions, uh, you can ask now. Participants, if you have any queries, please post in the chat box. So regularly we are uh, organizing a lot of training program. And also we are doing outsourcing also. In our, in our uh, center, we are having GCMS, ICPMS. The ICPM is only for uh, inorganic compound analysis. So there we can do 85, 85 uh, metals. So we have FT uh, do digital electrophoresis. So everything uh, is there in our website. So you can uh, you can see uh, in the website also. If anything else, you contact Invocanin, sir. Uh, we will need to help you. And we can do collaborative work also. Uh, so thank you so much. I'm very much thankful to the management of Satyavo Manitra Science and Technology. I'm thankful to the uh, head of the department at Invokan and sir for providing this opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, I have a few questions. Uh, yes, can I ask? Am I audible to you? Audible, ma'am. Um, the first question is, uh, when we are looking into, uh, like you have given an example, like Coralina and Mangrove. So uh, you have been doing a comparative study. So any sample, let it be like uh, in one plan case, you have said tomato plan, like 500 um, gram of sample is in, enough to do the study. So my question is this, uh, how many replicates you have to do uh, when you come to, because uh, in that analysis, you have found more than 170 uh, compounds. So when you're going for a publication aspect or like that, how many replicates we have to do or how many times we have to do to confirm that this much is uh, are the products or compounds we are finding? That is my first question. So uh, whenever you're doing uh, analysis, uh, you have to repeatedly uh, do man. So repeat uh, uh, two, three times we have to do. More than two times we have to do. Then only we can confirm. So based on your experience, so you can easily uh, conclude. Yes, ma'am. Any uh, next question? Uh, so then, uh, uh, like uh, when uh, we have untargeted compounds or unidentified mm. compounds, how we decide uh, what is the column we should use? For example, uh, the n number of com n number of columns are available, ma'am. Uh, so, for example, you take FAME, uh, the fatty acid methyl ester. That is only for fatty acid analysis. And we are using very general column. Uh, there mostly uh, we can do all kind of uh, sample in the one column also. So like that, you have to select your column. Uh, so, uh, sir, isn't it like uh, if we have different columns, the result also will be different or... Uh, like that, that also chances there? Generally, uh, generally what we will do, uh, we have to select uh, a hypothesis, then we discuss with our simulators to many people. Uh, so this kind of study we are going to do. For example, you take aromatic hydrocarbon or amino acids or sugars. So we want to run uh, the combination of uh, these compounds. Then you have to inform to the uh, respective uh, persons, they will uh, uh, they will give a lot of ideas. So based on their opinion, you have to select your call. Uh, so then uh, you have said that like uh, GCMS is mostly for the low molecular weight volatile compounds and LCMS is for the opposite. But sir, you have already mentioned about derivatization uh, step. So isn't it possible that the non-volatile compounds can be converted to volatile and then it can be detected? For example, uh, in biological sample, mostly uh, the people are extracting with uh, methanol and ethanol. So most of them using methanol or ethanol. So this methanol or ethanol having hydrogen, uh, 
hydroxyl group so oh group so the this column uh, mostly the column uh, coming with uh, with polar to uh, purely non polar column and also uh, if you have a hydroxyl group oh group means it will uh, easily react with uh, in ionization in ionization source what will happen the ionization will happen man so sometimes uh, it having some moisture right so this oil which easily uh, uh, react with this moisture it, it will immediately disappear so we won't get any uh, spectrum uh, so we have to do we have to remove that oh group and we have to add uh, other groups means we can easily uh, detect so devdesization is very important uh, it will convert the volatile into so non volatile into volatile ones so we can easily uh, differentiate man for example you are doing pulse cycle you can uh, you can do non now you can do without you have to inject without derivatization and you can inject uh, with derivatization then only you can easily compare so what is happening uh, between the samples after after derivatization what kind of difference are there you can easily observe that's one kind of uh, that's one kind of method uh, sir and also like uh, uh, for unknown sample analysis like in the case of uh, quantitative analysis in gcms uh, like how do we decide the standards like uh, you have shown one graph where you have shown that one peak is coming for unknown sample at 700 and the for the standard it is coming out around 1000 uh, and both the sample volume is 1 microliter but my question is like how do we decide the standard because the target or we don't know what is in the sample for example uh, take fatty acids right n number of fatty acids also uh, there uh, so you have to purchase mixer of standard okay. so uh, for example i'm targeting uh, one only one fatty acid like uh, palmitic acid so for uh, con- for quantity purpose i i have to purchase palmitic acid that's enough or else my sample having mixture of uh, this fatty acids mean i have to go with mixture of uh, standard mixture of uh, yeah, mixture of uh, standard right so in uh, in company they have c12 c10 or c24 or c25 c30 like that they have different standard Uh, so we i am select i will select the mixture of standard so sir so that standard is a mix uh, mixture in one vial or like we have different different vials and each mixture we have one vial one vial okay so that will be our that library or like a reference is that's what in you're saying vials oh. having same concentration so we have to make it as a different concentrations we have to inject for example i am purchasing a standard i have to make it as a different uh, concentration like uh, 1 mg or 2 mg like not 1 ppm or uh, 10 ppm 20 20 ppm then i have to inject uh, the like uh, different samples 1 ppm like uh, one samples or 2 ppm second sample like that then i have to inject uh, uh, one by one then i have to make a calibration curve and calibration. finally i will do i will inject uh, my unknown samples and we see we can easily count it you know? okay sir uh, and uh, one more question is uh, that uh, you have mentioned about the thermal stability and volatility of the samples so how is that uh, because biological samples mostly you know they can denature fast or like they are very easily volatile so the thermal stability do, do you think still we can uh, all things will come under within the range of detection or like uh, there is a chance that we might miss some compounds Target in the target analysis. Uh, what we what we are doing? We are targeting particular uh, particular compounds. So we know about the information about compound, right? Mm. So what we are expecting, what is their molecular weight and what is their thermal stability? We know. Mm. So uh, based on that, uh, we can uh, develop our method file. We can start from low molecular low temperature to high temperature. In un un targeted metabolomics. uh we, we cannot uh, determine or we cannot uh, conclude right so yeah. that conditions we will miss some compounds 
Okay, thank you, sir. Very detailed, uh, very much of information. First time listening this much in depth, uh, like part wise as well as what all are things are happening within the GCMS, procedure wise, extraction analysis, all those things. Thank you so much, sir. Participants, is there any questions? Uh, I think no questions are there. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So, so thank you, sir. So.